Angelina Jolie referenced the outpouring of sexual misconduct allegations in Hollywood while urging United Nations peacekeepers to crack down on sexual violence in an emotional speech. Sexual violence is everywhere, in the industry where I work, in business, in universities, in politics, in the military, and across the world, she said during her keynote address to the UN Peacekeeping Defense Ministerial Conference in Vancouver on Wednesday. All too often, these kinds of crimes against women are laughed off, depicted as a minor offense by someone who cannot control themselves, as an illness, or as some kind of exaggerated sexual need, she added. But a man who mistreats women is not oversexed. He is abusive. Jolie, who has worked as a special envoy for the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, previously confirmed to the New York Times that she had had a bad experience with Harvey Weinstein that caused her to end her relationship with him. Weinstein has been accused of sexual misconduct by over 50 women since the New York Times and the New Yorker documented decades of alleged sexual misconduct and sexual assault involving a number of women in detailed articles in early October. Any allegations of non-consensual sex are unequivocally denied by Mr. Weinstein, a representative for the producer tells People in the statement. Mr. Weinstein has further confirmed that there were never any acts of retaliation against any women for refusing his advances. Mr. Weinstein obviously can't speak to anonymous allegations, but with respect to any women who have made allegations on the record, Mr. Weinstein believes that all of these relationships were consensual. Jolie called sexual violence a critical obstacle to achieving women's equality and our full human rights adding that it is often used as a weapon of war. It is cheaper than a bullet, and it has lasting consequences that unfold with sickening predictability that make it so cruelly effective, she explained. Outside of Hollywood, the actress pointed to female Rohingya refugees seeking asylum in Bangladesh, saying that almost every woman there is either a survivor of sexual violence or a witness to multiple incidences of sexual assault, rape or gang rape rape. It is a myth that rape is an inevitable part of conflict. There is nothing inevitable about it. It is a weapon of war aimed at civilians. It has nothing to do with sex, everything to do with power. It is done to torture and humiliate innocent people and often very young children. I have met survivors from Afghanistan to Somalia and they are just like us with one crucial difference. We live in safe countries, with doctors we can go to when we're hurt, police we can turn to when we're wronged, and institutions that protect us. They live in refugee camps or bombed out streets in areas where there is no law, no protection, and not even the hope of justice. They struggle to keep their children safe, and if they admit to being raped, they are likely to face more violence and social rejection. Other survivors live in countries where war is over, but the peace has brought no justice. And as an international community, we are responsible for that. We need to shatter that culture of impunity and make justice the norm, not the exception, for these crimes. We need political will replicated across the world, and we need to treat this subject as a priority. We need to see real commitment to go after the worst perpetrators to fund proper protection for vulnerable people and to step in and help the worst affected countries. We need all armies, peacekeeping troops, and police forces to have the prevention of sexual violence in conflict as part of their training. More than 100 countries will be represented at this summit, and we are asking them to take these measures. But we really do need your help. This whole subject has been taboo for far too long. War zone rape is a crime that thrives on silence and denial. The stigma harms survivors, and it causes feelings of shame and worthlessness. It feeds ignorance, such as the notion that rape has anything to do with normal sexual impulses. But most of all, it allows the rapists to get away with it. They feel above the law, 
because the law rarely touches them and society tolerates them. As Eleanor Roosevelt once said, the destiny of human rights is in the hands of all our citizens and all our communities. And this evil will continue ruining the lives of millions of people unless we make this summit a turning point. And we can. We must send a message around the world that there is no disgrace in being a survivor of sexual violence, that the shame is on the aggressor. We must work together in new and unprecedented ways across borders and religions, bringing governments and people together and tackling the problem from every possible angle. And by doing this, we can end the use of rape and sexual violence